Hello, Randy Rain here, and this is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now, and a certain group of people have been wanting me to make this as well, and that is how to make something remote control. More precisely, it's how to make something remote control using the RX480E receiver and these four channel key fobs. So let me get started. You can get these little sets anywhere. You can get them from China real cheap, or you can get them on Amazon, all kinds of places. These are not hard to find. Google RX480E, and these are four channels, and so there's four different buttons on the remote, and you can have them do different things. You can have four different momentary switches, so as long as you hold the thing down, it's on, you let up, it's off, you can also have them set where one turns it on and another one turns it off and so forth. There are actually seven different settings on these that you can have it do. I'm going to start with the remote because these come in two different flavors, at least that I know of. Inside, one kind uses the button cell like this. Other ones use this kind of battery. They both work. All right, so let's have a look at the circuit. On the back, it tells you what each pin is for, and there are seven different pins. The first pin is your negative or ground. Your second pin is the positive. And then you have four data. You have zero, one, two and three and then you have let's do that it's an output i'll get to that also up here there's a spot to solder an antenna on but basically you're going to need a power supply that is three to five volts and they will need positive will go to there and negative goes to there. For your project, you might need an on and off switch. You will need to break one of these and put the switch here. I prefer the negative just because I know that if you leave a battery connected, it's going to start corroding and it's always the negative side and the corrosion can go all the way up. So if you put the switch here, it stops it. But I've heard arguments for the positive side, so do whatever you want to. I don't really care. Each one of these is an output. Well, all of these are an output. This one is going to go positive every time you push the button. So no matter what, if you push the button, you are going to get a positive charge on this, on any of the buttons. And so what that one's for is for one you might want to put a you know a LED here and that goes to ground you will need a resistor here if you need an indicator light to know that you've pushed the button that's what this is for if it's working some microcontroller and it needs to talk to it to let it know a button has been pushed that's what that's for otherwise every one of these is going to go positive when one of the buttons is pushed. If you look at the remote, there's A, B, C, and D. You would think it'd be A, B, C, and D. It's not. It's A, B, C, and D. So if you push the A button, this is going to go positive. If you push the D button, we'll go positive. And C and B and so forth. So how do you use that? Well, let me show you. What is coming out of here is going to be the same voltage that you're getting. So it's going to be 3 to 5 volts coming out of here, depending on what you're putting into it. So if you just want to light up an LED, you could put a resistor, about a 330 ohm resistor, should be okay. And then whatever the symbol for LED is there, and then put it to ground. And so that's on the A, 
every time you push the A, that LED would light up. You could instead put it over to here, and anytime you hit any button, that LED will light up. But let's say you want to turn on a motor like this. It can take 12 volts. So what if I want to put in 12 volts and I want to use this to turn it on? How's that? Well, you're going to need a transistor. I'm no expert on transistors and all the billions that are out there. And there are literally billions of different types of transistors. There may be way better ones that I'm about to recommend, but I'm telling you, these will work. And they are called T I P transistors. And they come from 100 to I think 140, maybe 160, I don't know. The common ones are 120. You see those a lot. Those are really easy to find. The difference between them is just how much current they can handle. I've never had a problem with them. And they're dirt cheap. The other thing you're going to need is a resistor. And you'll need a 1K resistor. You'll connect it here. And this is the base of the transistor. This is the emitter of the transistor and it goes to ground. This is called the collector. That is your output. So let's say you have a motor. Here's your plugs. Here's the part that spin and you need 12 volts. You have this over here. You have another big battery here that puts out 12 volts. And it has a negative and a positive. Well, the negative part needs to come over to here. To this part, which is the same as this part. The positive part needs to go to one side of the motor. The collector needs to go to the other. So now, when you push that button, a positive charge happens on this pin. When this base right here gets a positive charge, it allows a negative charge to go from the emitter to the collector, which makes this negative. And then positive is already coming through here, and so that side is positive, which now turns on the motor. So if you just had it set to momentarily on the switch, as soon as you let up, there's no more positive charge this turns off you still have positive coming to here but now you have no negative and the motor turns off same thing if you had it to latching if you pushed one to turn it on you could push the other it's going to turn it off now for good practices right here across this motor you need to put a capacitor and it needs to be i don't know 0.1 or 0.01 microfarads it really doesn't matter all that much and what that does is decrease the noise that's going in the electricity from the motor and also when you stop the electricity going to the motor the motor's still going to spin for like half a second from momentum and when it's doing that well it's now a generator so it's now generating electricity and so it gets absorbed by the capacitor and so it just protects the circuit and that would be the same thing if this wasn't a motor, but it was, you know, a, a solenoid that's pulling. You've got all these coils here. Same thing. Any type of mechanical thing that uses electromagnetism, you need a capacitor. But let's say it wasn't. Let's say all it was was a light bulb an old style filament light bulb. Well, you're not going to need a capacitor then because it's not electromagnetism and it can be just like that. I have a little breadboard here, so let's see this in action. You can see this little guy here. Take a nine volt battery. You can see it seven to 10 volts input here. And you can see these things right here. 
those are the voltage regulators and there's a 3 volt and a 5 volt and there's little jumpers that you can set them to and so I have this side set as 5 have this side set as 3 so I'll put it in like this I'm going to need that first pin there to go ground. I can make that second pin. That's my positive voltage there. So now when I turn this on, that is technically on. And there's a little button right here. And if you push that button, you can see, see the little LED light up. If you hit it eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that clears everything. No programming to this key fob at all. I'm gonna set it to momentary. So I have to hold the button down to turn it on. And when I let up the button, it's gonna go off. To do that, I just need to push it once. Push it once. And that LED goes on. And then you just keep pushing this until it goes off. Now you can see every time I push the button, that LED is going on. So it is working. So now let's say I want to make it run this motor, but it needs nine volts. So I've got another nine volt battery here. I have one of these TIP 120s. The pin out for this is, this is the base. This is the collector. This is the emitter. Now I'll put it down here so you can see it. You'll need a 1K resistor, which is brown, black, red. That goes on the base. I'll put it, just stick it right there. This to the resistor. And we'll bring it up here to A. A is D3. So when I push A, a positive volt is coming out here going to go through this resistor and it's going to turn on that transistor. Now the emitter is over here and it needs to go to ground. So I'll jump it over here. I'll jump it over to this part where you can see. And then the collector is the middle one. So when it turns on, the ground is going to be coming out of that center one. And so I'll hook this to here. And then I'll hook the motor to ground here, like that. And now I'll take positive here and goes to the positive of this battery. But now I have ground here. This ground from that battery, well, I'll hook it here. It has to go with all the grounds. All the grounds have to come together. So now the motor is getting a positive from this 9 volt. This thing is going to be powered from this 9 volt, but it's getting regulated down to 5 volts. Now actually this is a very nice motor and it doesn't cause a lot of noise, but if you are having a problem, and it could be possible with different motors, you would take a capacitor and put it across right here, just like that, which is either side of the motor. You can see none of the other buttons do it. That's the A button. And if I moved it over to here, that would be the D button now. Now A doesn't do anything, but the D does. But let's say it wasn't a motor. Let's say it was a solenoid. It's a little solenoid like this. So now when I push D, now let's say I put it on that output that is VT. No matter what button I push, but let's say you had a solenoid like this. This is a AC solenoid and it requires 120 volts straight out of the wall here in America. You're going to need 
something like this, which is a relay switch. And essentially the relay switch is the same thing as this right here. And so what it's doing is it's moving contacts. And then you'd hook that up to the AC. All right, so this is pretty sketchy. AC is plugged in. So now AC is coming into here, going to, one side is going to the solenoid, other side is going to this switch. So when I push one of these buttons, it should turn that relay on, which makes connection to turn that on. So here we go. Yeah, it works. No spring on this one, so. All right, I have it set up to my multimeter. So there's five volts going into this thing. And so when I push one of the buttons, you can see it's almost, almost five volts. So let's take all this transistors and stuff off. So if I had an LED here, that should be negative there. Then I have a 330 ohm resistor and then straight to the output here. So now, when I push the button, it comes on, and that's just the straight output. Here's a light bulb. As you can see, as I go straight to positive here, that light will turn on. So if I go straight to positive, the light turns on. But if I put it on an output, it's not turning on now. And that is current draw. There's not enough current or amperage to do it. So if you wanted to light the light up, you would have to go back to your transistor. Now when I push a button, it comes on. Because now there's enough current can flow through this transistor. And this is all from one power supply. Now you might have noticed there wasn't any kind of antenna, but this is the antenna and it's just a coiled wire and it gets soldered right here. And for the most part, you won't need that. But if you want some good range, you will. But if you're real close by, this is not even necessary. Now, if you didn't know, I'm actually a professional magician and I actually make magic for other magicians as well. And this is the number one thing that I get asked all the time. How do I make something remote control? Or I see other magicians make something remote control and they use these big kits that require a whole bunch of batteries and all this stuff. And there's an easier way. This is how you do it. So if this helped you or you like this video and stuff like that, I would appreciate a big thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button. I'd like to thank these people right here. These are the people bringing you how to do this. So I thank them oh so very much. And if you got something out of this, you should probably be thanking them as well because I couldn't do any of this without them. And if you'd like to become a patron and all that stuff, there is links and whatnot. So go check that out. Anyway, hope it helped you. Thanks for watching. A, A and B are latching. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's going to tell me that seven is going to make A and B on and off. C and D on and off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, A and B is on and off. I'm guessing if I go over here to this one, C and D, yep. Yep, that's all the different modes.